Welcome, I am Nigist Burru, Regional Technical Manager for the FAMIN Early Warning Systems Network or FUSENET. Thank you for watching. If at any time you wish to skip ahead, click below the slide to advance. To access closed captioning, click on the YouTube icon. This presentation summarizes the food security outlook through September 2016 in the 10 countries that FUSENET monitors in East Africa, along with Yemen. Before we start, a bit of background on our analysis. FUSENET does projections on food security outcomes using a methodology called scenario development. To analyze the food security situation, our specialists conduct an eight-step process utilizing a range of information, data, and forward-looking assumptions. We subsequently develop scenarios that look eight months into the future. In Yemen, Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, Kenya, and Uganda, this analysis is the basis of food security outlook reports and monthly updates. Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, and Djibouti are covered remotely by an analyst in our regional office. The monthly remote monitoring reports focus on anomalies. On the maps, a colored outline of the country indicates the highest level of food insecurity anticipated in areas of concern. FUSENET describes acute food insecurity using Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, or IPC 2.0. This five-phase scale is used by analysts and humanitarian assistance agencies around the world. As we look at classifications, please note that when an area reaches phases 3, 4, or 5, crisis, emergency, or famine, urgent humanitarian assistance is required. FUSENET uses an exclamation point on its maps to highlight areas where humanitarian assistance is helping to lower the phase classification. Here is a summary of the outlook. The largest food security needs are expected in Ethiopia, where more than 10 million people will be in need of emergency food assistance in 2016, following poor El Niño-related rainfalls that led to the worst drought in more than 50 years in many areas. The highest severity of acute food insecurity is expected in South Sudan, where continuing conflict is leading to high levels of needs in Greater Upper Nile. In Yemen, large areas are expected to remain in emergency, IPC Phase 4, as protracted conflict has eroded purchasing power for many. Many households through the rest of the region saw improvements to their food security following favorable crop and livestock production, including in Central and Southern Somalia, Kenya, Rwanda, and large parts of Uganda. Lower than average rainfall and conflict are the primary drivers of acute food insecurity across East Africa. Meanwhile, market activity remains strained in many areas. Rainfall. Very poor rainfall across northern areas of the region led to significant decrease in crop production and poor livestock conditions. This map shows rainfall as a percent of normal from March to September. Large areas of Ethiopia and Sudan received much lower than average rainfall. Conflict. Conflict effectively prevented many from cultivating in Burundi, South Sudan, Sudan, and Yemen. Conflict has also restricted access to typical source of income. Trade route access and market functioning is also affected. Continued displacement limits household access to food and income. Markets. Below average harvests in Ethiopia, Sudan, and South Sudan are contributing to restricted market supplies. Purchase prices for key staples in drought and conflict-affected areas are expected to remain high, while incomes remain low. In South Sudan, high levels of inflation continue to significantly restrict market access for many. Market access in much of the rest of the region will continue to be good due to the availability of harvest, stocks, and typical levels of seasonal income earning opportunities. In Ethiopia, more than 10 million people will be in need of emergency assistance between now and September. This figure does not include the roughly 8 million people who receive assistance through Ethiopia's Productive Safety Net program. The worst affected areas are East and West Tarake, Southern Afar, and Northern Somali, as well as Waghamra and Pockets in North Warlo in Amara region. Poor households are expecting significant gaps in their food consumption needs. They face emergency, IPC Phase 4. Neighboring areas are less affected but still facing crisis, IPC Phase 3. The primary driver is one of the worst droughts in 50 years in central and eastern areas of the country. 
The drought has led to well below average harvest throughout most of these regions and decreased pastoral resources. 2015 and 16 harvests are well below average for large areas in eastern Tigray, eastern Amara, central and eastern Oromia, northeastern SNNPR, and Somali region. Significant livestock losses have occurred in Afar and northern Somali regions due to lack of rainfall. This map shows land surface water availability per capita in October 2015. As you can see, water availability was well below average. So far, the appeal for humanitarian assistance has been about 50% funded. Consequently, a near-complete pipeline break is expected in June if further contributions to the appeal are not made. June coincides with the peak of the lean season as well as the seasonal end of PSNP assistance. In many areas, humanitarian assistance is playing a significant role in the ability of households to fulfill basic food needs. In Sudan, FUSNET expects the resident non-conflict affected population experiencing acute food insecurity will nearly double this year. In total, more than 4 million people in Sudan will experience crisis, IPC phase 3 or higher, due to ongoing conflict and the impacts of poor rainfall. Conflict continues to be a major driver. The purple outlined areas in South Kordofan are frontline areas and shaded areas are where there were conflict events in January 2016. In mid-January, approximately 90,000 people were displaced from their homes in Jebel Mara due to increased conflict. Households impacted continue to face difficulty carrying out their livelihoods, activities, typical agricultural activities or seeking wage earning opportunities. Much of northern Sudan had significantly below average rainfall during the main season in 2015. Significant anomalies seen in eastern Sudan, which is largely a surplus producing zone, but also note that Darfur experienced below average rainfall. FUSNET estimates that Sudan's 2015-2016 crop production is expected to be 25% below average. However, large carryover stocks from 2014-2015 and imports are expected to offset the drop in production. Consequently, we expect cereal prices to remain average overall. Nevertheless, due to limited connections between areas of good supply and areas of poor supply, Atypical high prices are likely in western areas. Pasture availability is significantly below average. Pastoralists are migrating from areas where pasture has been depleted by lack of rainfall. Currently, approximately 1.7 million people are displaced from their homes in South Sudan. Most of the internally displaced persons, or IDPs, are located in three northeastern states, Unity, Jongle, and Upper Nile. More than 750,000 South Sudanese have fled the country. The conflict has also disrupted markets across the country. This map shows the level of disruption along major trade routes in South Sudan. Red indicates severe disruption. The disruption leads to significant price increases, which are also high due to the depreciation of the South Sudanese pound. Limited foreign currency reserves are also making imports more difficult. As conflict continues, Access to markets and livelihoods will remain restricted. Additionally, as households' own production stocks become exhausted much earlier than normal, no significant increase in food availability is expected before the main season harvest in June and October. Consequently, the number of people facing the most serious level of acute food insecurity, crisis IPC phase 3, emergency IPC phase 4, and catastrophe IPC phase 5, are expected to increase. The conflict in Yemen continues to drive high levels of acute food insecurity. Major trade routes across the country have been severely impacted, but not all routes are disrupted and there appears to have been some improvement. At the same time, conflict has reduced the country's capacity to import food. However, that capacity has increased slightly in recent months. Market supplies and market prices appear to reflect these changes. This graph shows reduced prices for wheat, flour, and for diesel fuel down significantly since November 2015. Households purchasing power remains low, though as the protracted conflict has eroded household savings and continues to limit access to typical source of income, including from agricultural activities, government salaries, and remittances.
Millions of Yemenis face crisis, IPC phase 3, or worse, acute food insecurity. At the end of January, Task Force on Population Movements identified 2.43 million IDPs in Yemen, down slightly from December 2015 levels. Before closing, a reminder to check the reports on our website for more details. You may also subscribe to alerts on specific countries or regions. Once you sign up, we will send an email whenever a new report is posted. And of course, you can learn about new reports by following us on social media. Thank you for listening. Our next video briefing is scheduled for July.